Welcome to the Suicide Prevention Show. I'm Jackie Simmons, and we are waking up the world. And what we're waking up the world to in this section, in this section, I'm so glad you're here for this one. We're going to wake up the world to a little town. Actually, it's a huge metropolis, but it looks like a little town that you don't want to live in and that many of us do. The town is called Shouldville. And we're going to be leaving Shouldville together today. We're going to talk about how to reclaim your personal power so that you don't live in Shouldville. Why? Because Shouldville is a dark, dank place where lives get lived and dreams go to die. Shouldville, it's where you go when you should on yourself. Oh, I shouldn't have said that. I should be further along in my career. I should be willing to talk about it. There are so many things that we should on ourselves with. And then, if that's not bad enough, just when you think you can get out of shouldville because you've stopped shooting on yourself, you're stuck in shouldville because you're shooting on somebody else. This has been an interesting period of time because we've got media that is shooting all over everybody. It is so bad and so stinky that the habit of shooting is becoming commonplace. I cannot turn on a radio. I can't look at my computer screen. There is almost nowhere I can go without somebody shooting on somebody. It's like we're having a shoot fest. Yeah. And yet it's as bad as that. Why? Because Shouldville is a big metropolis and a really short walk to a place called Shame Town. And as dark and dingy as Shouldville is, Shame Town is not where dreams go to die. Shame Town, if we live there long enough, will poison us to the point that we die. And I believe that it's a direct connect to the rise in suicide rates. And that's why this conversation is happening on the Suicide Prevention Show. I want to help you connect the dots so that you don't spend any time in shame town. And that you spend minimal time in Shouldville. So that you're just driving through and you don't end up owning property there or even renting a place. Now, I can talk about Shouldville because I owned country club property in Shouldville. I woke up thinking that I should have gotten up earlier. I woke up every day thinking that there was something I shouldn't have said. I would go to pay my bills and there would be things I shouldn't have bought. I would go, oh yeah, it got worse. You know, I mean, it was just, oh, I shouldn't have eaten that and I shouldn't have said that and I should have. And I can go there today. I mean, don't get me wrong. I used to own country club property. Now, I don't own country club property and I'm going to teach you today the four paths that I took to get out of Shouldville. And I'm going to give you a fast action tool that you can use that will get these messages into your brain in very fast so that you don't have to study hard, all right? This is not a hard study course, but this is the story of Shouldville. <sighs> Did you ever feel guilty for spending money? What was the one thing that you felt guilty about spending money on recently? You can pop it into the chat. You can put it into the comments on this video. What did you feel guilty about spending money on? Or maybe for you, you felt guilty about something you didn't spend money on. Now for me, I had the double whammy. I felt guilty for spending money on near about everything. Why? Because when I was really little, and this is not a bash my daddy, this is, he didn't know 
any better. This was his only way of communicating on money. But here's what happened. I was really young. I, I was little. And I was, it was a big adventure for me because I was given the job of taking the money and going over to the nut stand. Now, I, it might have been you know, a whole 20 feet. But for me, it was a big adventure because you know, my family was all right here. And I was going to walk all the way over there all by myself with the money. And my daddy gave me the rule. He said, you know, here's what I want you to do. I want you to go over to the nut stand. You take the money. You give them the money and you buy your, your what nuts you want. You buy your favorite nuts. I'm like, oh, I, get to, I get to pick the nuts. I not only get to go over there away from my family, I get to pick the nuts. So I went over and I handed her the money and I'd say, and I said, I want cashews, please. I really like cashews. Always have. I want cashews. And the lady put the cashews in a bag and she gave me the bag. And I went back over to my family. Look, I got the nuts, I got the nuts. And my daddy opened the bag and he looked at the nuts and he said, if you'd gotten peanuts, there'd be more of them for us to share. In that moment, I learned not to trust myself to make decisions about money or about how to spend money or about what to buy. It's not the lesson that he wanted me to learn. He was trying to teach me a value lesson. Yo, know, you get more for your, you know, more bang for your buck if you go this way. But that wasn't the rule that he gave me. It wasn't what he told me to do. He told me to get what I want. So the other thing that I learned is that if I get what I want, I'm going to feel bad. Let me tell you, that can play out in a lot of different ways in your life. If you've got a belief system the way that I had a belief system that said, if I get what I want, I'm going to feel bad. Stopped me from going after what I wanted for many, many years. And then there was the other side. So I got the message I shouldn't have bought that. And then there was the message about what I should have spent money on. Now, spending money is not always about the money you've got in your wallet or even the money you've got in your bank account. Sometimes it's about the money you're willing to borrow. And in my case, it was about student loans. And when I looked at what I was going to have to sign, what I was going to commit to, I hit up on another money fear. This one from my mama. Now, my mama is a formidable woman. And this is not about bashing my mama because this is about her truth. My mama put herself to finish college after my parents separated with four girls that she was raising on her own, my mama finished her bachelor's degree. My mama went on to finish her master's degree. For my mama, education was king. It was her education and her work within the education system that allowed her to support all of us and to support herself and to build up for a retirement. So education later, it was king. At the point that I was coming into high school and coming out of high school, looking at colleges and we're doing all the financial aid stuff, we're doing all of these things. My mama's fear around money and around not having enough, which is where she had lived most of her life. She was just to give you background. My mama's a coal miner's daughter. She was born in 1928 in the coal fields of West Virginia. My mama grew up with a lot of beliefs around money, including the fact that people who had money didn't talk to little girls like her. She never thought that she had money, even though she owned her own home and it was free and clear and she traveled and you know, she owned, she collected antiques, but she didn't ever give herself permission to believe that she could handle money. And so when it came time for me to be looking at student loans, her fears became my fears. And then for the most of my 20s and 30s, there was the money shame about the money I didn't spend. There was that guilt around what I didn't spend that I should have gone to college. Trust me, my family could should with the best of them. 
So I got should on a lot. And we have the three sources of how you stay in shouldville. Other people should on you and you start to believe it. You start to should on yourself because you believe it. And you start shooting on other people because isn't that what we're supposed to do? Isn't that how we help people get better is by telling them what they shouldn't have done or what they should have done? I don't believe so anymore. Let me tell you, here's the path out of that. So the first path out of Shouldville, you read this out loud. And I'm going to give you the Cliff Notes version. It started out being a negative. No money I've ever spent was wasted. That's the first way I expressed it. But as you know better, you do better and you say it better. I got pushback from the positive psychology community that said the brain can't hear the negative. So all you're doing is reinforcing that you've spent money that was wasted. I'm like, really? By the way, this was my introduction to positive psychology, something I'm a big fan of now. So reframe, here we go. <clears throat> Stand up, take a deep breath, declare this out loud. Every penny I have ever spent was well spent. Even if I would not choose to spend a penny that way today. I'll say it again. Every penny I have ever spent was well spent. Yes. Even if I would not choose to spend a penny that way today. You know better, you do better. But let's acknowledge that nothing, nothing was wasted here. So that's the first path out of Shouldville. It's all about freedom from money guilt. Now, the second path out of Shouldville, the second area, and you can pop it into the chat if this is true for you. Have you ever lost time? Have you ever thought that that time was just gone and you regretted it? Do you ever have time regret? Oh, I've regretted a lot of the time, at least I used to. You know, time I spent watching soap operas. There was a time where I actually did that. Time that I spent sleeping. I have had moments where I felt very, very regretful that I was asleep instead of doing something else. What time have you regretted? Do you have moments that you've regretted? Because regret is another name for I should have spent my time. Oh yeah, and here's a big one, exercise. I should have spent my time at the gym. I should have spent my time on my exercise bike. I should have spent my time doing you know, my Pilates and my aerobics and, and I should, 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 should when it comes to time. And my first way of expressing a path out of Shouldville around time was to say, no time I've ever lived was wasted. No time I've ever spent was lost, actually. There we go. So Katie, thank you for getting that. The thing about time, it was no time lost. And again, positive psychology, they don't hear the word no. So let's get this right. What I had to come to was every second, and this is one of the ones you can stand up and repeat after me. Every second I've ever lived was well lived. Even if I would not choose to live a second that way today. This is the freedom from regret Every second I have ever lived was well lived, even if I would not choose to live a second that way today. This is freedom. And freedom from shouldville is worth going after. So let's see. We've talked about money and we've talked about time. 
one of the things that kept me in Shouldville the longest had to do with both of those. It had to do with the money and the time that I either did or did not spend in school, in college, in my studies. There's a challenge with this for me because one of the reasons that I wasn't showing up for my studies wasn't so engaged. One of the reasons that I didn't complete some of the things I started to study. <sighs> oh yeah, I didn't finish my college story, did I? <sighs> I did eventually go to college when I was in my 40s. When I was in my 40s, I was working for a company. They had an employee program to attend university classes. And I thought, great, now I can handle the finances of this. You know, didn't need any loans. Solved that particular issue. This was before I knew about Shouldville. So I went to college. Don't get me wrong, it was valuable. And the learning that I got when I left college, I'm a successful college dropout. Here's where I had to get to. The conflict that I had between what I had lived and learned outside of college and what I was living and learning in college was really small. I was, it was a great school. They had great learning. That wasn't where my conflict was. My conflict was in what I was being told that I had decided to believe, which was why I was studying what I was studying in college. <sighs> There's a place here of where I had never learned to judge for myself. Who I am and what I'm supposed to be doing. I was in my 40s. It all came to a head in what was the fastest, longest four months of my life. The fastest, longest four months of my life started New Year's, New Year's 2003. I had been to visit my sister Jeannie, who lived in San Francisco, and we just did the town on New Year's. And I came home from being out of town. My husband picked me up at the airport, drove me home. The kids are about grown at this point, you know, not many of them living at home and certainly not spending much time at home. And he said, we need to talk. Has that ever had a good connotation? In this case, what he wanted to talk about was divorce. Again. Only this time, he wasn't angry and he wasn't screaming and he was calm and he was ready. He was actually ready for our marriage to end. January, that was January. Took a couple of weeks for it to really sink in. February was the beginning of a new semester, a new course at the university I was attending. And I was prepared. I had my book. I showed up for the first night of class and sold my book. The person next to me did not have a book. And I said, would you like mine? And she was like, what? And I'm like, here. Here's my card. Here's my, my phone number, my address. Mail me a check for it. Take my book. And I gathered my stuff. And I walked out. And I never walked back. I went to the registrar's office and withdrew. I was halfway through a degree in business management. What had happened in those few weeks from the time that my husband had asked me for a divorce and that first night of class was that I came to the realization that I was studying for a career I didn't want 
because he had said that it would be a good idea. I was living under the direction of, if you're going to go to college, go, you do this. I hadn't learned how to decide for myself. This is the path out of shouldville. When you've been should on where people tell you what you should do, who you should be in the world, this is how you get out of that so that you're not living in that dark, dank town. Every word. Oh, by the way, it did start out with a no, the short path. And it was no word I've ever read was useless. No word that's ever been said to me was useless. That's how it started out. Positive psychology. When I flipped it, here's how it came out. Let's flip your brain. Take a deep breath. Stand up. Say out loud. Every word I've ever read, every word a teacher ever said was useful. Even if I disagree with it. Every word I've ever read, every word a teacher ever said was useful, even if I disagree with it. My husband's words, he was my teacher in that moment. You know, teachers tell us the truth. I had given him the job of being my truth teller. In this one statement out of Shouldville, I took back my power to tell myself my own truth. My truth, who I am. That's what I want for you. I want you to claim your truth about who you are. And you do that by accepting the fact that every word you've ever read, every word a teacher's ever said was useful, even if you disagree with it. Sometimes, especially if I disagree with it. And that's the third path for leaving Shouldville. The fourth path for leaving Shouldville brings me back to that really fast, really long four month period in 2003. January, my husband at the time asked me for a divorce. February, I dropped out of college. March, What sounded really good was my supervisor, my boss, saying, Jackie, the next time that there's an opening for a supervisor, I want you to apply for it. And I went, uh, I don't qualify. You require a college degree, which, by the way, was one of the reasons I was in college was to get the degree to get the promotion. And he said, we don't care. We want you to take on a supervisory role. quit my job. That was March. I quit my job and became an entrepreneur again, because I used to be one. I became an entrepreneur again. I quit my job because it wasn't what I wanted. I hadn't known it wasn't what I wanted until they offered it to me without me meeting the qualifications. I was like, oh, this doesn't feel good. Because remember, I've now had a couple of months to get used to this idea that I was not going to have somebody telling me what I should be doing anymore, that I was going to have to start doing that for myself without the should. I'd be looking at what I wanted. And in that moment, the last thing I wanted was to be tied to that company or any company. <sighs> Do you ever just know something about yourself? I know that I'm a lousy employee. I get bored. So I didn't know it then, but that's how it played out for me was when they said, we think you'd be really good at this. That was useful because I got a gut reaction that said, oh no, I wouldn't be. So we're not going down that road. You can end up in shouldville a lot when you think that other people should be different than who they are. I thought my 
husband should be different than who he was. And all through this period of time, all through our marriage, and we've been married over 17 years at this point. Yeah. And we've been together long, a little bit longer than that. So all through this time, I thought that he should be different than he was and that we'd figure it out. He would change. The number of years I spent in counseling, either with him or without him, a lot of it has to do with the number of times that he told me to go talk to a divorce lawyer. Because yeah, we had a contentious marriage at times. Not all the time, but sometimes. So thinking that he should change, that he wasn't who he should be, that my life should be different. I call this now arguing with reality when I think that my life should be different than what it is. When I think that the world should be different than what it is, I'm in shouldville. If I think that anything isn't as it should be, I'm in shouldville. And that's a dark, dank place where lives get lived and dreams go to die. And what was happening is that I started giving myself permission to dream. I didn't want my dreams to die. I had to find another way out of Shouldville because I was still there. I'd get out when I addressed the fact that every penny I've ever spent was well spent. And then I'd get back in. Then I'd get out because I'd address the fact that every second I've ever lived was well lived. And then I'd go back. And then I'd get out because I addressed that every word I've ever read, every word a teacher ever said was useful. And then I went back. And I went back because of other people. I went back because people weren't who I wanted them to be. So my first attempt to write this path out of Shouldville came out as no person I've ever met was evil. I got pushed back, not just from the positive psychology people. I got pushed back from people who had so many horrific experiences or even one traumatic experience and they knew that the other person involved was evil and i said all right hmm. <clears throat> we'll rewrite this take a deep breath stand up get ready to speak out out loud every person i have ever met enriched my life in some way, even if I would not choose to spend a second with them today. I'll say it again. Every person I have ever met enriched my life in some way, even if I would not choose to spend a second with them today. This is freedom from blame. In that moment, I stopped blaming my husband for not being the person that I wanted him to be. In that moment, I stopped blaming. And here's what happened. January, February, March, now it's April. My marriage has ended. I've dropped out of college. I've quit my job. You would think that would send me spiraling into a pit of despair and depression. And what happened was the opposite. In April of 2003, I stopped taking antidepressants. I didn't start. I stopped. I haven't taken one since. Haven't needed them. Coming out of Shouldville, I didn't understand that even while I had clinical depression, not situational depression, clinical depression was my diagnosis. And yet it was attitudinal based. And I didn't know that. Apparently attitudes impact biochemistry. Who knew? Well, now I know some people knew because people wrote books like The Biology of Belief, but I hadn't heard of those books back then. I did not know this. I had just been living it. It's amazing what happens when you recognize that you're living in Shouldville. And that's the first key to getting out of Shouldville is you have to have awareness that you're in it. 
So if you've got a dream and you're not taking action on it, you might be in Shouldville. There we go. We're going to start a whole new rant. Here we go. You might be in Shouldville. And it's a total riff off of the man who said created you might be a redneck. So here it goes. If you've got a dream and you have not taken action on it in the last week, you might be in Shouldville. You might be in Shouldville if you've got a book inside of you and you haven't put pen to paper or hands to keyboard or voice to dictation in the last week. You might be living in Shouldville. You might be living in Shouldville. If there's a conversation that you want to have and you haven't had, we don't call these conversations now when we're talking about the emotional resilience mastery, we call them talks. Conversations sound too fancy. These are the talks. If you've got a talk inside of you that you want to deliver, whether it's to have with someone or to deliver to someone, and you have not scheduled that to happen, you might be living in Shouldville. If your bank account is not reflective of the amount of effort you are putting out to change the world and to help other people, you might be living in Shouldville. See, shouldville impacts everything that we do. If we are shooting on ourselves or others and we are arguing with reality, it's going to impact every area of your life, but not all at the same time. So you might have it going on in your personal relationship, but not in your bank account. You might have it going on in your bank account, but not in your family. You might have it going on in your family, your friends, your social life, and not have it going on in your health. This is how you know you're in Shouldville, is if one of those four tires on your car, your personal relationships, your money, your work relationships, your social relationships, or your health, if one of those is not where you want it to be, you might be living in Shouldville. So we're going to help you get out of Shouldville really quickly right now. We're going to give you the tool that gets these lessons past your critical thinking brain and into your other than conscious mind in three minutes. And it's going to change and pull you out of Shouldville for six to eight hours. Yes, that's what I said. Now, don't get me wrong. You've got two paths out of Shouldville. You got the four paths, but you got two ways to implement them. You can, and I'll send everybody the PDF for this. You can print this off. You can put it on your refrigerator, on your bathroom mirror, everywhere you go, and you can do what it says. You can read it out loud and off it. You can even screenshot this. No problem. I'll try to hold it still. Or, and you can go to, and here's where I could should on myself today. I'd love to tell you to go to leavingshouldville.com. But the truth is that particular domain name I do own <laughs> and somebody is hijacked. You don't want to go there. Where you want to go is emotionalteflon.com. Emotionalteflon.com. And Teflon, for those of you who aren't from the day, thank you, Katie, is spelled T-E-F-L-O-N, is where you can get the free gift. Now, here's what's going to happen. When you click through, it's going to ask you for your credit card. You're going to say, wait a minute, I thought it was a gift. And the answer is, it is. And what you get as a gift is the session that has been created that will get all of these messages for leaving Shouldville. You're going to get leaving Shouldville. You're also going to get a session called Being Happier. 
And this was created based on positive psychology. And the, ver the veracity of it was tested by Sean Aker, the man who wrote the book, The Happiness Advantage. His company proved beyond a shadow of a doubt that watching for three minutes improved mood and attitude for six to eight hours. So when I partnered up with this company to get my content into the world using their very fast method, because I like speed. Can you tell? I told you my whole life story in four pieces. I like speed and this is fast. And this is the fastest path out of Shouldville. So yes, I want you to do this and put this where you can find it and where you can read it out loud and often, peek under here, and I want you to grab the gift at EmotionalTeflon.com. I want you to have the absolute best, most cutting edge technical tool that will get these messages past your critical thinking brain and into your other than conscious mind. Why? Because I don't think anybody should live in Shouldville. I don't think anyone should spend a second in Shouldville. Why? Because there's so much more fun here, where there is sunshine. There's not a lot of sunshine in Shouldville. By the way, if you suffer from seasonal affective disorder, you might be living in Shouldville. There's not a lot of sunshine in Shouldville. So come out of Shouldville the fastest way possible. When do you want to leave Shouldville? Soon as you know you're in it. How's that for something? As soon as you recognize that some area of your life your money, your personal relationships, your friends and family, your social world, or your health, that one of those areas is out of alignment. As soon as you recognize that, instead of trying to put air in the tire or doing what most people do, ignore that, let's go pump up the other three tires because that'll make it where we can get down the road. Instead of doing that, use this tool. Use either one or both. Read it out loud and often, and out loud is really important. Why? Because what you hear yourself say makes a difference. And I'll bet, as a matter of fact, I'll make a bet. If you have not should on yourself or someone else today, put it in the chat. I'll give you a gift. Matter of fact, I'll give you more than a gift. I'll give you airtime. Because I want to talk to you. I want to interview you. If you have gone through today without shooting on yourself or others, I want to know. I want to be able to take what you're doing and share it with the world. Because I think getting out of Shouldville is an everybody job. I'd love to see those towns totally abandoned. Because here's what I know. If I can keep you out of Shouldville, you'll never go to shame town. You can't get to Shane Town without going through Shouldville. So if I can get you out of Shouldville and keep you out of Shouldville, I know you'll never go to Shane Town. So I don't see any chat activity, by the way. We don't have anyone who has made it through today so far without shooting on themselves and others. And the reason I could say that is because when I realized that leaving Shouldville.com was not going to be able to be used today. When I was talking about leaving Shouldville, I took myself to Shouldville. Actually, I also took the internet provider and, you know, the people who had hijacked my website. And, you know, I mean, I had a whole list of people I was shooting on. What's true? It was just a great opportunity. It's a gift for me to be able to show you how easy it is to go to Shouldville. It's easy to get into Shouldville. And thanks to a little modern technology and to your ability to be able to print this, which you're going to get, it's going to be easy for you to stay out of Shouldville. And that's my wish for you. So thank you for being you. And thank you for going on this journey with me so that you could understand a little bit more about who I am, what I do, and why, why I think what you do matters. And here's what I know. When you're not living in Shouldville, 
you are much more willing to stand up and speak out and take your truth into the world, whatever your truth is. Truth is hard to come by in Shouldville. And that's the truth. So thank you for being willing to consider living someplace else. And by the way, don't worry about abandoning your property in Shouldville. There's a waiting line. There's a lot of people hanging out on the park benches, just waiting for some property to open up. They won't pay you anything in cash, but they'll give you peace of mind. You're not abandoning anything. So this is your get out of Shouldville free session. Leave Shouldville today. Grab the emotional Teflon. There's a lot of benefits for it. And thank you for being you. And thank you for being here. And thank you for being part of the suicide prevention movement. Can you tell I have a hard time getting the last word in? Here's the last word. The suicide prevention movement is about the mission to make suicide a thing of the past. Help your family get out of Shouldville. Spread the word. It's okay to leave.